18 years, TMZ has led celebrity news with groundbreaking exclusive stories. TMZ investigates the most trusted source in celebrity news. It's a horrible place to be, but this is where we're at. Where Kevin Costner was at? War. In fact, one of the nastiest divorce wars in Hollywood history. We've had a lot of scandals going on and major divorces, particularly Kevin Costner and Christine Baumgartner. The rumor mill was certainly churning. Allegations of cheating. But you've never hooked up with her. Absolutely not. But the real drama focused on the almighty dollar. And Kevin had 400 million of them. There's nobody in their right mind that's going to get married, at least Kevin Costner, who already had to give up $80 million to his first wife, not to enter into a prenup. So Kevin got Christine to sign one, and she sorely regretted it. Are you still living in the house at the moment? He is offering the smallest of fractions for the mother of his children. Christine was ready for battle, asking the judge to make Kevin pay a quarter million dollars in child support a month. When the judge gets off the bench, does the judge look at the bailiff and say, can you believe her? It happens all day long. Prenups are tricky, especially with insanely rich celebs. I want you to role play with me. How do you approach it? Well, I kind of feel like this relationship needs to be based upon equality. Well, I want equality too. I want half. So in my mind, that's not equality. Chris, we're breaking up. So how did Kevin and Christine navigate their divorce? Who won? Who lost? And how did they find new love so quickly? TMZ investigates Kevin Costner's divorce war. In the spring of 2023, Kevin Costner was riding high. Better? Better on my balls, hard on my legs. Well, that's life, Carter. Something's always getting beat, no matter what. Already a movie star of epic proportions, Costner was enjoying a huge career resurgence, starring in the biggest show on television, Yellowstone. This is as even as it's gonna get. Then, suddenly, it was like an earthquake hit the set. Kevin Costner was leaving Yellowstone. The official reason, a scheduling conflict. But it went deeper. A lingering feud with the showrunner and a salary dispute led to Kevin's exit. You held up to the light. Yes, sir. Well, there it is. Because Costner has been a huge star for decades with movies like The Untouchables, Field of Dreams, Dances with Wolves, and The Bodyguard, he had amassed enormous wealth, hundreds of millions of dollars. His real estate portfolio, spectacular. A 160-acre ranch in Colorado and a stunning compound right on the California coast outside Santa Barbara, complete with, you guessed it, if you build it, you will come. His very own field of dreams. I get asked a lot by my um, friends who have no manners, Kev, what's this place cost? I can just simply tell you on a day like today, it's worth every penny. Costner was sharing his incredibly charmed life with his wife of 18 years, Christine Baumgartner, a former model. The two met briefly on a golf course back in 1992 while he was preparing for his role in Tin Cup. They ran into each other six years later, started dating, and married in a star-studded ceremony at his ranch in 2004. He was 49, she was 30. Hollywood's A-list was on the guest list for the weekend affair. It was a wedding like anybody else's. We just chose to do it here. This was Costner's second marriage, her first. They had three kids together and raised them in the idyllic, tight-knit community around Montecito, California. It's a small town where you may bump into stars like Oprah, Harry and Meghan, Ellen, Rob Lowe, or Jennifer Aniston. Everybody, does anybody, is, is safe here because they feel that it's well away from Beverly Hills and Hollywood and the paparazzi. 
and it's a unique spot, you know, a beautiful area by the sea with the mountains behind us, a unique uh, location, and it's become more popular over the years. <laughs> At least from the outside, the Costners led an incredibly privileged life. They had it all. I can't imagine what it must be like to just get up in the morning and look at my reflection and go, yeah, I'm Kevin Costner. <laughs> <laughs> what was the buzz around Kevin and Christine before they got divorced? Well, they were seen as a very happy family living on Padario Lane, which is an area where all the beach houses are here with George Lucas just down the road, Ashton Kutcher, uh, Conan O'Brien, many other celebrities. They were seen out and about with the kids, you know, at various events. And Kevin would go to the coffee shop here, the Montecito coffee shop, with the boys, and uh, perceived as a happy family. Then, one day, something hit Kevin Costner like a ton of bricks. As if uh, Kevin Costner leaving Yellowstone wasn't a big enough shock uh, for him and all of his fans, he and his wife are getting divorced. Kevin never saw it coming. Christine was done. She wanted out of the marriage and filed for divorce. As for why, she never said publicly, but the town was buzzing. Well, I think there, there was a, a great deal of derision and criticism because everyone wants to see a happy family. There were rumblings that one of the things she was unhappy about was he was gone a lot. Um, he was out shooting Yellowstone in a different state and that it just got too lonely. Do you hear that? I mean, he's a very busy man. Of course, Yellowstone has been a spectacular success, but those are the projects that were earning the money to keep them in the style that she rather liked, quite clearly. Kevin was devastated. He did not want to get divorced from her, did not know this was happening, and it's kind of heartbroken. But what Kevin also didn't see coming was the nasty public divorce battle that would expose loads of personal and financial secrets. It's a horrible place to be, but this is where we're at. I, it, it feels so bad. We're talking about somebody I love on the other side. I just can't. There would be rumors of cheating on both sides. Kevin was accused of getting someone on the set of Yellowstone pregnant, a report we know was untrue. Kevin Costner, we've spoken to people close to them, to the now former couple, and th there is no truth to that whatsoever. I just was a tenant. I just had a tenant landlord relationship, so nothing, yeah. nothing else. There were rumblings. Christine was having an affair with a man named Daniel Starr, who rented a guest house on the family compound. A report Starr flatly denied to TMZ. There's a story out there that's saying that Kevin confronted you about hooking up with Christine. Nah, did nah, you? No, nah, absolutely not. You never did? Absolutely not. No. He's a really good guy, and I have no problem with him whatsoever. But you've never hooked up with her? Nah, absolutely not. You got, but you guys were friendly? You know, I'm a nice guy. I try to be friendly to everybody, so, uh, yeah. It was just nothing more than friendly there's neighbors. Just, there's nothing there. They're I really, they're gone. They have kids going through divorce. I just hope that they're, they dance peacefully for them. Now, here's the thing. Kevin had been through an ugly divorce once before, and it cost him a fortune, $80 million. He wasn't about to make the same mistake twice, so he made sure there was an ironclad prenup in place before he said, I do, to Christine. So things should have been resolved relatively smoothly, right? Not at all. Not by a long shot. Another round in the ongoing divorce drama between Kevin Costner and his estranged wife, Christine. Both sides just filed new papers with wild new accusations. What ensued was one of the nastiest celebrity divorces in Hollywood history. Kevin Costner is about to get the shock of his life. Do you still have love for Christine? Of course. Are you still living in the house at the moment? as Christine demands an eye-popping, astronomical amount in child support. They request these crazy amounts of child support. In reality, they're the ones going to get Botox. They're the ones actually living that grandiose lifestyle, but they put the budget together for the kids and themselves. The average struggling American family is going to look at that number and wonder, do you really need that much money to take care of your kids? Our daughter watched her get dressed today, and it was just a perfect, perfect way of watching our younger daughter look up to her mom. When Christine Baumgartner married Kevin Costner in 2004, 
her life changed dramatically. Christine came from relatively simple means and had just moderate success as a model. Now, she was married to Kevin Costner. One of the biggest movie stars on the planet and very, very rich. What is it like living with the Kevin Costner? That's a big question. The best part. Well, I can't say the best part. But he was also a divorcee who had lost a fortune when his first marriage came to an end. His ex got $80 million, making it one of the most expensive divorces in Hollywood history. For Kevin Costner, who for the last 16 years has been married to his college sweetheart, Cindy, the end, according to Hollywood insiders, comes as no great surprise. It's a divorce that could be very costly to Costner. Our sources say Kevin did not want to get hitched again. Oftentimes, the second spouse pays for the sins of the first one. And this is a traumatic experience for anybody to go through a divorce and to have this financial loss. So they are very wary to get into a new marriage. But Kevin's resistance went beyond money. Christine desperately wanted to have children with him, and Kevin already had four, three from his first marriage and one from another relationship. She said, but if you're going to be with me, you need to know that kids are at the end of the road for me with you. It was unusual, you know, that somebody puts the news out right there the first day. And it took me about six years to get there because I couldn't reconcile it. Costner eventually came around, telling a reporter, one day I woke up and thought, am I going to lose a beautiful woman who is willing to be with me to my very last breath because I am afraid to say yes to a child. But this time around, Kevin wanted a prenup. Not unusual for a Hollywood marriage, certainly when it's the movie star's second walk down the aisle. We're talking about Hollywood. There's nobody in their right mind that's gonna get married, at least Kevin Costner, who already had to give up $80 million to his first wife, not to enter into a prenup. This is what happens in a prenup, is that it's I love you, but sign here. And this is a condition of marriage, and it's often expected when one party has tremendous wealth and the other party doesn't have much. Here's what we know about Kevin's prenup. Christine gets no spouse support. If they divorce, she gets a $1.2 million payout, plus she has to leave the family house within 30 days after filing and Kevin agrees to pay her $200,000 for a down payment on a house, and he'll foot the mortgage bill for a year. She has to keep her car, her personal effects, and that's about it. Kevin, right here. I think it's low, but listen, that's what she entered into, perhaps hoping to stay happily married for the rest of her life. Whether she left the marriage, he left the marriage, whatever it may be, that's what she's stuck with. When we hear about a young woman marrying an older actor and signing a prenuptial agreement, a lot of people know what Kevin Costner is worth. And they can see after years of marriage, how little Christine Baumgartner is getting out of this divorce. If you really look at the numbers and you look at what Kevin Costner is worth, he is offering the smallest of fractions for his ex-wife, the mother of his children. Now here's what the prenup didn't cover, child support. It's up to the judge to set the amount based on how much it would cost Christine to provide the kids a lifestyle that reasonably resembles what they had. Now, Christine and Kevin agreed on joint custody where she'd have the kids half the time. So Christine and her lawyers came up with a number, $248,000 a month. One of the tricks that a lot of people do when they're unhappy with the prenuptial agreement that they executed, waive support, alimony that is, and then they try to get more money through the kids. The average struggling American family is going to look at that number and wonder, do you really need that much money to take care of your kids? However, when you look at how much money Kevin Costner has and what he's worth compared to Christine Baumgartner, who can't or won't ever live that same lifestyle again, then it seems pretty reasonable that she would want more money. 
Christine said it was simply expensive living the Costner lifestyle. They had a team of people catering to their needs. She needed more than 100 grand a month for a mortgage and expenses on a similar house in Santa Barbara, and another 71,000 bucks a month for an Aspen residence. And that's just for starters. Christine also said in legal docs, when we don't fly privately, we fly first class. When one party makes a lot of money, there's largesse, it's the two pony rule. How many ponies do children need? One pony, two pony, three ponies. So people argue, hey, wait a second, we are maintaining a lifestyle. My kids would never go on a commercial flight. They're only going on private. I'm wondering how judges receive something like that. You know, a judge makes $150,000 a year maybe, and he's listening to somebody saying, my kids will not fly on a commercial jet. Does that argument, like the airplane, fly? <laughs> yes, it doesn't take off all the time. I think judges do get offended. They are disgusted at times when people are so outlandish in their requests. So it's not an easy ride in this system. I think there was a great deal of derision and criticism because everyone wants to see a happy family. They thought she was being extremely greedy in this matter, asking for huge sums for her, her daily routine. There's some truth to that for sure. Christine listed her expenses to justify a quarter million dollars in support every month. Well, guess what? One of those items was $100,000 for cosmetic surgery. There was also thousands of dollars in boutique shopping, huge ATM withdrawals, her attorney's fees, even a one-time construction loan, hardly child support. The judge called her out for that and said that this amount that she was seeking was just a end run around the prenup. A lot of people waive alimony, but then they request these crazy amounts of child support to kind of subsidize their lifestyle and say, wait a second, my kid needs two nannies. But in reality, they're the ones going to get Botox. They're the ones actually living that grandiose lifestyle, but they, they put the budget together for the kids and themselves. The bitter negotiations over child support played out publicly and almost certainly had an impact on the Costner kids. All of your friends at school know about your parents going through this, and then you're seeing misinformation in the media about your own parents. That's the psychological part that impacts celebrity kids. So I imagine there's probably some level of embarrassment. When you go to famous parents, there's a certain burden that comes with it. There are benefits, of course, in the kind of lifestyle you live, the houses you live in, but obviously it can be very harmful at a certain age for kids. Kevin's team scoffed at the $248,000 demand and countered with $75,000 a month. Remember that figure. And so began a super nasty battle, a full-on divorce war. You see, Christine and her lawyers sent a signal to Kevin, pay up or we just may challenge the validity of the prenup. And that could make Kevin's first divorce look like a bargain. Christine's swinging for the fences with a plan that totally threatens Kevin's prenup. She asked for outrageous sums of money, and it was clear to the judge that this was for her benefit, not for the children. Do so you have anything to say about the ruling today? When the judge gets off the bench and passes the bailiff on his way into his chambers or her chambers, does the judge look at the bailiff and say, can you believe her? It happens all day long, every day. Do you still have love for Christine? Of course. Do you hope this all just gets resolved very quickly? I think everybody does. Kevin Costner and his estranged wife, Christine Baumgartner, were at war over their divorce. She wanted $248,000 a month in child support. He was offering $75,000. But even more serious, Christine was challenging the part of the prenup which required her to leave the family home within 30 days of the divorce filing. She has made rumblings um, since she filed for divorce that she's going to challenge this prenup. And Christine said she couldn't afford to get her own place, even though Kevin offered her $200,000 for a down payment. 
Well, it did seem rather stingy on the face of it because the median house price here in Montecito is between six and seven million dollars. And of course, his estate on Padaro Lane by the ocean has been valued at 140 million. So certainly just a million dollars probably wouldn't get you a porter potty. So Christine wanted the judge to cut her a break and let her stay in the family home until the settlement was worked out. She refused to move. Enter Kevin's lawyer, Laura Wasser. She's repped one side in just about every big celebrity divorce over the last two decades. Kim Kardashian, Britney Spears, Angelina Jolie, Dr. Dre, Maria Shriver, and the list goes on. I've often said that divorce is the great equalizer because no matter how much fame or power or money you have, you are really feeling the same fears and feelings of failure and feelings of sadness. Wasser's play is always to try and settle. But when the other side wants to fight, she's up for it. And fight she did, telling the judge a deal's a deal. Christine signed the prenup and now she's stuck. If there's full disclosure in the prenup, if both people have attorneys in the prenup, if both people speak English and understand the prenup, and it's signed enough in advance of the wedding, then it will likely stand up. The judge agreed and ordered Christine to find another place, which ignited a new battle. So you have anything to say about the ruling today? Thanks. Christine found a $40,000 a month rental, but it wasn't to her liking. She told the judge it was on the mountainside of the freeway and had no scenic view or beachfront access, adding, quote, you can't walk there with the surfboard. What's more, visitors using the pool had to come into the main house just to use the shower. Judges do not get phased when you come into court with a high net worth individual. But I think what does bother them is that you're fighting over such minimal you know, big world problems that they have no tolerance for. When the judge gets off the bench and passes the bailiff on his way into his chambers or her chambers, does the judge look at the bailiff and say, can you believe her? It happens all day long, every day. I think comments like, you know, big problems to have. Kevin also claimed Christine was fleecing him, secretly using his credit cards to rack up huge bills. He also says he was paying for her divorce lawyers, and found out he footed the bill for a criminal defense lawyer she hired for 25 grand to act as her publicist. She asked for outrageous sums of money, and it was clear to the judge that this was for her benefit, not for the children. They live in a beach community. It's a laid back lifestyle. Yes, there's a lot of wealth, of fancy houses, but they didn't need that much money. So she was really doing it for herself and suffered a lot of self-inflicted wounds in the litigation. Big setback for Kevin. When the judge decided on temporary support pending a final decision, the amount was eye-popping, $130,000 a month. But through it all, Kevin never spoke publicly. Kevin Costner has been an actor for decades. I mean, so he has built decades of goodwill through decades of very, very good movies. And now with Yellowstone, it's a tremendously powerful, popular television program. So he would have to fall far to fall out of favor. However, it, no matter who that actor is, if it appears that he is being unfair or trying to control his soon-to-be ex-wife, it's a difficult reputational challenge. Mr. Costner, sir, right here. Meanwhile, Kevin wanted to keep his finances private, but that was not to be. Christine said he was worth $400 million. Kevin never confirmed that publicly, but he reminded the court he had just left Yellowstone and wouldn't be getting that salary. Either way, if the prenup ended up invalid, Kevin would have to cut an enormous check. That's life. In case you haven't noticed, it is cruel and uncaring. So why would the prenup be invalid? Well, Wasser asked Christine if she understood the prenup. And Christine's lawyer fired back. She didn't understand what the word understood meant. It was bizarre when Christine was saying she didn't understand what understand means. The prenup had a bunch of language in there that, that confirmed by her that she had read and understood the agreement. So there was a stalemate. That is, until Wasser played the nuclear option. 
If Christine challenged the prenup and lost, she'd have to return $1.5 million Kevin had already given her. And she'd have to pay his attorney's fees for challenging it. That is all laid out right in the prenup. There's things that we can put into a prenuptial agreement that could try to keep people on the narrow and make sure that they're not fighting and litigating, you know, to the nth degree. Christine took a huge risk if she was going to challenge the prenup that she would lose and have to pay Kevin's attorney's fees, and she would wind up with nothing. She would walk away with nothing other than a few years of very high child support. Kevin and Walsa claimed, based on the children's needs, $63,000 a month was reasonable, and the judge agreed. Remember, we said Kevin had offered her $75,000 a month. Well, that ship sailed. Christine went and swung for the fences, and she struck out, and she ended up getting less money than she could have got in a settlement. As for the prenup, Christine never outright challenged it. The judge had already used the terms of the prenup to kick her out of the family house, so it was clear the judge felt it was valid. Somebody like Kevin Costner, drafting a prenuptial agreement is first and foremost and making sure that it's ironclad, because you hear everyone always talking about making sure it doesn't get set aside. So you think it's case closed? Well, when it comes to celebrity divorces, there are always stories that come out about who did what to who. Was there an affair? Was one spouse cruel to the other? For Kevin especially, this was a public relations nightmare he desperately wanted to avoid. Hi there, Kevin. Yeah, how are you doing? Kevin's team says flat out, right in the divorce docs, Christine has a boyfriend, and he's no stranger to Kevin. Did people say, oh my God, it's Kevin's friend? Well, everybody likes to gossip. We have a great social scene here. The rumor mill was certainly churning. Costner is a massively famous movie star. But in real life, he's relatively low key. He doesn't do much social media, rarely gives interviews, and lives a pretty quiet existence, a safe distance from the glaring lights of Hollywood. I'm not that comfortable in the city. You got a log cabin? I got a cabin, yeah. 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 You look like a log cabin guy. Yeah, I got, I, I got a little cabin. I, I got acreage, I got tractors. I, I, I love that. I'm, I'm actually not a very good craftsman. It's just I'll do it all day. Can you fish? Yeah. Hunt? Yeah. I have bird dogs and... You do the whole thing? Yeah. But when you're Kevin Costner and you're in the midst of a messy divorce, laying low can be a challenge. Especially in the tight little community of Montecito, a stone's throw from Costner's home. People there want to know their neighbor's business. Even the rich and famous like a little gossip. And this is a town that talks. Well, everybody likes to gossip. We have a great social...
and tittle tattle is the name of the game. And of course, we've had a lot of other scandals going on and major divorces, particularly Kevin Costner and Christine Baumgartner. The rumor mill was certainly churning. Gossip they did. People around town were talking about this guy, Josh Connor. He was a good friend of Kevin and Christine who lived nearby. Recently divorced, Josh was spending time with Christine. Did people say, oh my God, it's Kevin's friend? They didn't know who he was. He wasn't a celebrity in that sense. Josh and Christine raised eyebrows when they took a trip to Hawaii together in the middle of the divorce. TMZ contacted people connected to them and they both flatly denied they were in a romantic relationship. Apparently, Kevin wasn't buying it because his legal team told the judge Christine's boyfriend had given her $20,000. That boyfriend was Josh. If those rumors persist, even though everyone involved in the situation is saying that it's not true, it's going to affect you because you recognize the limited amount of control you have over your personal narrative. And speaking of idle gossip, some people on social media were dragging Kevin throughout the divorce, calling him cheap for not bowing to Christine's demands. Sources in the know tell TMZ it didn't bother Kevin because he never read a thing about his divorce. Kevin, how are you enjoying the holidays, Kevin? I'm fine, thank you. you Every celebrity I've ever represented, I tell them, don't read the newspaper, don't go online. I will handle the no comment. Let us do our job, because judges are watching, too. It's smart to keep the bad news and the bad chatter out of the way. It can get into your head, and it can rent space into your head. Well, maybe Kevin did tip his hand just a tiny bit on how he felt about Christine. Back in August, he took his 13-year-old daughter, Grace, to Taylor Swift's concert at SoFi Stadium in L.A. And he was caught on camera grinning when she sang... to say Kevin and Josh aren't speaking anymore, which makes it tough because they live in a small community where everyone seems to run into each other. So now that the ink is dry on the divorce, what could have been done differently to avoid a war? The answer is disturbing. Protecting yourself in a divorce can be a deal breaker. Let's say that we're engaged. Tell me about the prenup you want me to sign. I would say that we need to be clear what our financial expectations are. Well, excuse me, sir, but I want half of what you make because we're partners together. But I'm not willing to be married under those conditions. You don't love me. <laughs> TMZ has broken some of the biggest stories in pop culture for nearly two decades. Now, TMZ documentaries continue to break new ground, digging far below the surface on stories that have captivated audiences, stories in the zeitgeist of pop culture. TMZ documentaries available on Hulu and Tubi. Kevin Costner thought he had an ironclad prenup when he married Christine Baumgartner. Fact is, it was. But when one side is unhappy with the terms, a war isn't necessarily inevitable, but it's likely. What happened to Christine is that she went way overboard, and she wasn't just shaking the tree, she was trying to knock it down, and it just wasn't gonna work with that judge. So which is more common in celebrity divorces like this, shaking the tree or a shakedown? Well, there's a lot of shakedown elements in these cases when you have one celeb and a non-celeb going to court. Kevin tried to settle this case to keep his financial information and movie projects, et cetera, uh, out of the public courtroom, but then it all got out there. I mean, we got to see a lot of detail about his lifestyle and spending and income and status of projects. But once that information was exposed, there was nothing else that she had over him and he actually came out looking pretty good because he stood his ground. 
There are always wild cards in divorce. It gets expensive to duke it out in court, real expensive. And you never know if the judge you get will turn on the spouse who's worth a fortune, but won't share it. This is a money game. It's a business deal. At the end of the day, your marriage is over. You're not in therapy, you don't want to save it. Focus on the deal. I love you. There have been numerous deals struck in celebrity divorces to avoid all out war. Deals with eye popping numbers. It is gearing up to be one of the most expensive divorces ever as Bill Gates and his estranged wife, Melinda, figure out how to divide their $130 billion fortune. E.T. has confirmed that Brandon Blackstock wants Kelly to pay him $436,000 a month. Another sad chapter for Tiger Woods. His six-year marriage to Elon Nordegren is now officially over. The terms are unknown, but Elon is expected to get about $100 million. So the way I see it is that uh, the person who was kind of forced to sign the prenup should challenge it because nothing is certain in the law and the person who has the most money is probably gonna settle for more than what the prenup would have given the other spouse just to avoid litigation costs, to avoid the fear of losing. Do I have that right? Absolutely, the people who have prenups are, are risk adverse. Uh, that's why they have the agreement in the first place. The celebrities who can look at a divorce or look at some challenge that they're dealing with in terms of money, if they have an approach that it's only money, money will make this pain go away, money will make everything go away. Sometimes it backfires. Dr. Dre and Nicole Young had a prenup, but she challenged it and the fighting was brutal. Dre was burying his grandmother, and this is a woman who helped raise him. According to our sources connected to Dre, as they were about to lower the casket into the ground, a process server involved in the divorce confronted him and tried to serve him with legal papers over attorney's fees. Dre was worth $800 million, and Nicole wanted half. After the handwriting was on the wall, they settled. Nicole got 100 mil. Our sources say Dre would have paid more, a lot more, if Nicole hadn't waged a fight. The most awkward thing about a prenup is asking for one. How does someone, especially a rich celebrity, ask his or her fiance to take less than what the law provides, especially in a state like California, where without a prenup, assets accumulated during the marriage are split 50-50? Chris, I want you to role play with me. Let's say that we're engaged Tell me about the prenup you want me to sign. How do you approach it? So I would say that we need to be clear what our financial expectations are going into this marriage, and we both need to be protected. Well, excuse me, sir, but I want half of what you make because we're partners together, right? That's right, but I'm not willing to be married under those conditions, and it would be a very messy divorce and so what I want to do is have it fixed so each of us know what we're going to get if we end up breaking up. You don't love me. Well, I kind of feel like this relationship needs to be based upon equality and also uh, with an understanding of what each of us have bringing into the marriage and what we're going to do. And it would scare me to be in the relationship if there would be a messy uh, outcome. Well, I want equality too. I want half. So in my mind, that's not equality. And so we need to find a way to kind of work through this, but an open-ended deal is something I just can't do. Chris, we're breaking up. <laughs> As for Kevin and Christine, their marriage is officially over. There's no love lost, but we're told they've both moved on with their lives, still living in the same small town, which, by the way, makes sense. They share custody of their kids. And only months after the divorce settled, they both found romance. Christine found love after divorce. Any thoughts on your wife dating your ex neighbor? And guess what? So did Kevin.
Kevin Costner is twice divorced, and we're told it's highly unlikely he'll play the third time's a charm card. The reality is that one out of two couples will divorce first time around. Second time around, it goes up to 62%. And if you're getting married for a third time, you're getting divorced probably at a rate of 73%. But that doesn't mean he's given up on love because he found a jewel of a woman. Kevin Costner has rebounded. He is dating, and not just dating someone, he is dating Jewel. In December 2023, Costner and Jewel both attended a charity tennis tournament on Richard Branson's Necker Island in the Caribbean. It was obvious to everyone they were a couple. We found out they'd been secretly dating even before the tennis tournament. In fact, we found out they flew to Branson's Island together on the same private jet. It is much easier to date someone who has been in the same realm as you. They know the same vulnerabilities. They know the importance of secrecy, privacy, you know, keeping private information private. What you want is to find someone who you can trust. And it's likely easier to trust someone who's in the same industry as you. As for Christine, well, she's now dating. Yes, you guessed it. Josh Connor. Any thoughts on your uh, wife dating your uh, ex uh, neighbor? I don't have an ex or neighbor. Again, our Christine and Josh sources insist they did not hook up until after the divorce. And ironically, what drew them together? Both had been through rough divorces. Divorces do come and go, and this acrimony uh, that was shown in the divorce last year is now well in the back mirror. And I think people are just going on from there. So Christine can get on with her life and have another relationship, as she appears to be doing. And then Kevin, in due course, will also have his own relationships and hopefully he'll be happy. Even though they have had a very public brawl in front of the world, right, they can commit to being kind to one another and to putting the kids' well-being first from this point forward, I think the family can heal from even everything that played out in court. So what's the lesson here? If you're a rich celebrity, you're crazy not to get a prenup. But if you do, and the marriage tanks, don't be surprised if you have to shell out more than required. 